Hi, crafted entrepreneurs. Okay, so I recently just celebrated my 36th birthday, and I feel like I'm 25, probably. I have a lot of energy. I'm in great health, and I am further along than I thought I would be at 36 years old. I could truly say I am happy. Is everything going perfect? Of course not. But I wanted to share with you my 36 reflections on my 36 years. And my hopes for this is as you listen, you're going to feel motivated, maybe have a couple of hmm moments that help you shift your perspective. Because usually when you are just in life as an entrepreneur, you're usually one perspective away from more money from better connections, from incredible relationships. And so that's my hope. And you listening to these 36 reflections, we're going to get through them pretty quickly. And I might share some stories along the way. So let's get into it. Number one, you get what you give in life. And anytime I'm stuck, I go, okay, what do I need right now? Sometimes I just need encouragement. So I go and give encouragement. You know, I always want to be the person that's rooting for another person, showing them love, telling them I believe in them, you know, really speaking life over people. And so I am constantly giving that out to other people. And I feel like I just get random text messages or I'll get random voice notes from people online that don't even know me where it's like words of encouragement. And so uh, that's really helpful for me because it's not that that's the reason why I give out encouragement. I give out encouragement because I love to see other people win, but it's really true that I get a lot of that because I give a lot of it, right? And I, that's just one example. So I want you to think about that in your life. What are you giving? What are you giving? It's the most important thing. Number two, if it matters to you, it matters to God. And this kind of blew my mind when I finally wrapped my head around this. And, and this just happened in this last year. It was funny because I went to a comedy show by, oh my goodness, he's the funny guy, John Christ. Okay. So he, he like makes fun of like Christian things. It's, it's really funny. If you've never watched him or follow him, go look at his stuff. It's funny. Okay. So he was basically like making fun up there about how people will pray for things Uh, that might not be a problem to you. So it's like one person is praying for their aunt that is on their deathbed to be healed. And then the next person is like, I'm really stressed because I don't know, you know, if my kid's going to go to Harvard or Stanford, you know? And when you compare those two prayers, you're like, really? Like, I'm not going to pray for that. I'm going to pray for the aunt that's on the deathbed. But with God, it does matter. Like your prayers from the small things to the big things, he doesn't rate them. If, if it matters to you, it matters to him because that's the type of God that I serve. And this really blew my mind because, you know, as a parent, we care about everything that our kids care about. You know, we really try to help them live healthy, happy lives and be great critical thinkers. And, you know, we might look at some of the problems that they're having, especially as they're growing up and becoming independent and go, okay, it's not that big of a deal, but we have to teach them how it's not that big of a deal. Like, you know, everything matters. So the, the Hanford or the Hanford, the Harvard Stanford situation, like that really matters to a child, right? Like where they're going to go for the rest of their life. It's a big decision that they have to make. And of course that matters to God because it matters to you, right? That your daughter, that your son makes a really great decision for themselves. And so if you're struggling with understanding that God cares about everything that you care about, really look at the relationship you have or the view you have of God. Because when I started viewing God as like a father who loves me and wants good things for me, wants to protect me, doesn't want, wants all good things. Like none of us want bad things for our children. And that's our human love. Can you imagine agape love? It's, it's next level. We can't even fathom it. So really start viewing God like that. And I think your perspective will start to shift. Number three, focus on creating assets that cash flow. 
okay, I wish I would have had this knowledge when I was 18 years old. I really do. I would have done so many things so different. I want to do a whole episode on what I would have done differently. I wish I could write a manual for people when they turn 18 and I wish everybody would follow it. (laughs) No matter what business you get into or what job you get into, I really think if you just start to view your future through this lens of creating cash flowing assets, you will be free from the, the master that can become money in your life. You will be completely free of that if you get smart about having assets. So I cannot stress this enough. If you're looking for great opportunities, we have several opportunities over inside of my real estate fund and my cash advance fund. If you're interested, just come over to DM and to the DMs on Instagram and give me the word invest and I'll teach you about the opportunities we have. So number four, time is the most precious thing you own. As I'm recording this episode, it is Amazon Prime Day. And I cannot believe the amounts of people I have seen talking about Amazon Prime for a couple weeks, like getting ready for this big sale, like putting effort into saving a couple of dollars for Amazon Prime. And I did a little study myself because I said, you know what, I want to see if people are actually getting a deal. So I saved a couple things to see like the price, like I took screenshots of it a week ago. And then I looked on the prices today on Amazon and guess what? They're the same exact prices as they were last week. They just changed the prices and made it sound like full price was way more than it used to be. So I was like, wow, people are getting tricked. People are being duped to my point of time is the most precious thing you own. Rich people do not spend time looking for deals. They don't waste time going and seeing how they can get a 20 cent cheaper piece of meat or a 20 cent cheaper apple that takes them 20 minutes longer to get to that grocery store. No, they say they know the time is the most precious thing that they own. And so they budget their time accordingly. I want to spend time with people I love doing things that I love with them. I don't want to spend my time looking to save a buck. Chase's grandpa to this day. Every Sunday, he drives to five different grocery stores. He spends all Saturday cutting coupons, looking for the best deals. And on Sunday after church, he drives to all the different grocery stores to get the best deals. Okay. This is asinine crazy to me because he just lost Saturday and Sunday. He didn't spend it with friends or family or doing anything. He wasted it trying to find the best deals for food for the week. When you could have just spent that time looking for ways to make more money, looking for ways to have more fun with your family. So remember, time is the most precious thing you own. Number five, not everyone is your friend. And that is a good thing. It's such a good thing. I was really up until recently, I would say like the last year and a half or so, I called everybody my friend. And I would, I would be really like quick to call people my bestie as well. Like I had about 30 besties a year and a half ago. And then I realized, you know what? That's a titled role. That's a treasured role in my life. And I shouldn't give out that title so quickly. And I should also be careful who I call my friends because listen, not everybody is, you know, the person that has your best interest in mind. Not everybody uh, actually believes in you and says nice things about you behind your back. There are people who are acquaintances, and maybe these are people in your industry that, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example in network marketing. I found out really quickly when I left my last company that most people weren't my friends. And these were people that I went on vacations with. We went on family vacations with. And I found out as soon as I left to another company, these people blocked me on social media. So I found out really quick, okay, that's not a friend. (laughs) Okay, wake up call. Those were peers, right? Do I regret ever hanging out with them doing family vacations? No, we had a fun time, right? But just changing that relationship of going, oh, these are coworkers and they're not people that will be in my life for the rest of my life. They're people that I'm just doing life with right now because we have things in common 
we have the same passions right now, but they're not necessarily those people that are going to be my ride or die and want what's best for me, even if it's not what's best for them. Right. So I'm very careful now about who I call my friend and even who I follow on social media. It's like I was following all these people that I barely even knew. And it's like when you follow people, you're essentially putting your stamp of approval on them. And so now it's like, no, I got to get to know this person before I'm actually going to follow them, even if they're in my DMs talking to me. Like I'm very careful about that. So when you put endorsements on people, if that referral goes bad, you know, people are going to go, hmm, well, that's weird. Why would Kayla refer this person to me? Or why did Kayla say this was her friend if, if this person has this type of character? right? And so now I'm very careful. I'm just like, whoa, watch out for the titles. You could say, hey, I know so-and-so. I met her on Instagram. We've talked a couple of times. She says she's really good at this. And I thought you two should maybe connect. Maybe there's collaborations. But notice I did not say friend. (laughs) Okay. Define what your version of friend is, right? Number six, realistic goals give you a realistic life. I've said before that I set goals for myself that I rarely ever achieve. I used to set these really audacious goals when I was in network marketing. I'd be like, I'm going to enroll 50 people this week. And then I'd enroll like five. And, and, you know, I just tell my team that because I set my, my sites really high. And I, trust me, I took the action to try to get 50 people, but it just didn't, never worked out for me, you know, but I, I didn't let those failures get me down. I said, well, I want to try for 50 this week. And I just kept taking massive action. And that's eventually how I made millions of dollars in network marketing was because I set these big audacious goals that were completely unrealistic that you couldn't even, you couldn't accomplish them in um, the era that I was in on social media and with the amount of time I had with three little babies at home. Okay. So, but again, I just got up and I kept doing the thing and kept creating these big audacious goals that Chase would laugh at. And now I look at my life and I still haven't hit the life goal that I've set for myself in health, in wealth, in career, in my relationships, because again, I'm constantly moving the bar. I'm constantly raising the standards in my life and saying, okay, what worked for me five years ago in friendships, what worked for me five years ago with my wealth, it's not working for me today. I want this. I want to create that. So reminder, like don't follow what society tells you to do because you'll live a realistic life and you'll never truly see what you're capable of. So that's why I like to set these audacious goals is because I like to challenge myself. I like to see how far I can push my capabilities, my purpose, and the talents and skills that God has given me. So it's not that I'm not content. I love my life, but I love a challenge. And I'm not going to stay in my comfort zone and just kind of get what the leftovers are of my life. I want to see what is truly possible for me when I go all in. So that's why I set these big, crazy goals all the time. Number seven, the more discipline you build into your life, the more freedom you will experience. Think about this. I'm going to just take health for an example. I go to my personal trainer that I pay, I think it's like $200 a session to go to her. It is a bigger investment than going to the gym by yourself or going to group classes. So it's a bigger investment. But the reason why I like going to a trainer is because the accountability that is there And she has it to where if you don't show up, like she's still charging you the $200. So that is a really good motivator for me because I was getting into group classes and I honestly, like they still charge you, but it'd be like 40 bucks. I'm like, oh, well, you know, it's fine. They can use that $40. I'll be fine. I'll work out later. And then like that later didn't come. And I was going months without working out besides just doing my steps. And so I've been with this personal trainer for seven months my body has changed. I feel incredible. I feel so much stronger. And, you know, it's, it's a discipline to have to go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 a.m. And to like make sure I'm getting up in time, doing my devotional, like doing all the things to get there on time. And I don't love it. It's not like I'm going in there and it's like, oh, I love lifting weights. It's like, gosh, this is hard for me every single time. Even seven months later, it's like, oh, 
gosh, I got to lift this weight. I got to do this. Like, I'm not like a fan of it at this point in my life. Like, I'm really not. But again, it's a discipline because guess what? I have a lot of freedom that comes after that because I feel better in my clothes. I don't have to worry about like, oh my gosh, am I gaining weight? Am I da 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 No, it's because I start out my, my week with my personal trainer. It really sets the tone, right, for me making healthy decisions. I have somebody in my life that's constantly reminding me, hey, have you tracked your macros? How are you feeling? How much sleep are you getting? And so it's, it's helping me create healthier habits because I have that accountability in place too. But that's just in health, right? Well, let's talk about the discipline that it comes to building wealth in your life. When you get $120,000 paydays like I'll get from one client, the Kayla 10 years ago would have spent that on a freaking vacation. I would have spent that on a million other things than an asset because I don't know, I just liked nice things and I didn't have that mindset of the discipline. So now I get that $120,000 and it's already spent into an investment property. I already know exactly where it's going and that it's not only going to double for me, it's eventually going to 10X. And there will probably be an endless ROI on this because I just keep reinvesting all the interest I get on that principle that I invest. So I built up that discipline. Did I start investing $120,000, 100%, you know, of what I was getting from my clients? No. I started out small at the 10%, then to the 20%, then to the 30%. And, and after you build up that muscle, that discipline of investing, not your leftovers, but the first thing you get paid, your focus on multiplying the seeds like God has told you to do, it gets easier to move up to that 100%. So side note here, like choose which income streams, if you have multiple, which ones will be the 100 percenters. Right. So for me, I like choosing the ones where my coaching clients, because there's zero overhead with it. It's literally just me giving my time and expertise and my effort and energy into a client. It's my favorite, by the way. It's my absolute favorite way to make money is to coach to those private executive clients. And because there's no overhead, so I know I'm not going to owe somebody money in six months because they helped me with this client or anything. It's all me. That's why I do 100% of it into my investing account because I know it's not going to cost me anything later on to invest 100%. So on other things like my courses and my masterminds, I can't invest 100% because those things all cost money every single month for my business. Okay. So I only give a certain allotted amount into the investment accounts, right? So Uh, And then I know this too. What I love about that is I know, okay, I have a deal on the line. I'm going to need $500,000 to get this deal done in the next couple of months. Guess what I do? I go, okay, I'm going to take on more clients because I know it's 100% going to go into that investment account. That takes a lot of discipline to be able to invest that much on a regular, consistent basis. So build the discipline into your life because you will have a lot more freedom. When I say freedom, I mean choices. You know, my version of success, it might be your version of success too. It's saying yes when I want to say yes to the vacations, to the experiences, to the things, to the people that need it and saying no when I want to say no. I will only work with clients I like, right? Um, I don't do a lot of the things that people in my coaching industry do because I'm like, I don't want to do that. So I say no to a lot of things because I don't need that money and that's not the way I want to make money. So think about that for you, right? What's your version of success? Number eight, God put something in me to start something in you. I believe that. And so he's given me these desires. He has given me these dreams, these gifts, these talents. And he's also cultivated in me this heart to give that back to people. Like I'm always thinking about how do I help more people? How do I make sure people have results? How can I ensure people's success? And God gave that gift to me. Not everybody is wired that way. Not everybody like stays up at night thinking about how they can help people more. But that is the way that God made me. And so I know that if it's a good thing that God, you know, that is that I'm going through or if it's a 
hard thing that I'm going through, I'm like, whatever, God's going to work this out. And I'm going to be able to give this experience to people to help them on their journey. So I'm really thankful for that. Number nine, invest in real estate early and often. Again, one of those things I look back and think, oh my gosh, Chase and I would have done things so different had I known what I know now. And one of those things is, you know, we bought our first home uh, when we were, he was 19 and I was 21. And we kept that as an investment property for like, gosh, was it 10 years? Maybe a little, no, it was 10 years. Kept that property for 10 years. And the thing that I would have done differently is at that time in Bakersfield where we lived, we could have used that same amount of money to buy a triplex in the area. And then we could have rented out the other two. But, you know, that wasn't even on my radar. And I don't even think I would have swallowed my pride enough to be like, oh, yeah, I live in a triplex. Like I had that pride a lot of and cared about what people thought of me. but you know, you live and you learn. And now I get to teach other people like, Hey, like you're going to be so much further along if you just don't care about what people think (laughs) at 21 years old. So that's just one little thing. Invest in real estate early and often create a plan to do it on a quarterly basis. I cannot tell you the amount of people I know who make money in my world, like in network marketing and coaching and all these things, they're social media influencers online. And they'll reach out to me and they'll say, okay, Kayla, I'm interested in investing in your fund. And I'll say, sweet, let's set up a call. This is time sensitive because everything is time sensitive. Okay. Things fill up quick and you got to make your move. And people go, oh, well, I'm so busy. Maybe on the next one. Okay. Well, this has happened a couple of times now where it's the same story with these people. Oh, maybe on the next one. And I'm like, okay, either these people don't actually make money or they are not taking the time for their future. And That's a problem. You need, like, if you're listening to this right now, you have to set a plan for yourself and be looking for opportunities and make them a priority or else you're going to be working for money for the rest of your life. So you want your money to be working hard for you, putting it into a real estate fund like mine. It's a completely passive opportunity. You get paid monthly and then on the equity multiple when we sell the property and you're just collecting your check. It's a really cool opportunity. Number 10, look at your circumstance through the lens of your purpose, whatever you're going through right now. And we all have stuff at any given moment in our lives where we're going through it. It could be in health, wealth, relationships, career, spirituality, where we're just like, gosh, like this is a tougher season for me right now. Okay. And when you go into looking at it from a short-term perspective, like, gosh, this hurts right now and I want to get out of pain, so I'm just going to do anything. I'm going to take a shortcut. I'm going to do anything to get out of this pain. Instead of like working through the lesson that God is trying to teach you, you're shortcutting yourself, right? You're really shortcutting the character that is trying to be built in you. So when you start looking at what you're going through right now through the lens of God's purpose for you on this planet, it, it's like, okay, like I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I can understand why I'm going through this growing pain. And I believe that when I come out on the other side of this, all these good things are going to happen. And all of these people's lives are going to be touched and all and all and all. And you start to create a new story. You can move through the circumstance with strength instead of like, oh, it's hard. It's painful. I mean, I just want to get this over with. It reminds me of you know, all three of my kids, I had them naturally with no, no medication. And people always think like, gosh, how'd you do that? You know, that's so hard. And it's like, yeah, it was hard, but I went into it. We talked about it ahead of time. Chase and I said, no matter what, I don't care if I'm crying, begging you for pain medication, do not let me get the pain medication. And, and the first two, I begged him and he was like, nope, we're going to stick through it. You're going to be mad if I let you do this. I was so grateful I had him because the purpose was like to have complete control of my body after I had the baby. I wanted to make sure that the baby was safe and that, you know, I just, I didn't want any medical things inside of my baby when they were born. And I just felt really good about going all natural. Right. And so the pain, like, oh my gosh, Charlie, 17 hours, Cooper, 
you know, 13 hours, it's long, it, but it's so short, right? When you think about it now, it's like, okay, 12 hours, 17 hours of pain. Like, yeah, I'd do it all over again, right? Because the purpose was to, I knew what my purpose was. I knew I wanted to be in full control, completely clear-headed, walking around as soon as that baby was born. And that's exactly what happened each time. And I knew like with the third one, that one was a lot easier. I was like, yeah, (laughs) we could do it. It was easy breezy. But looking at your circumstance right now, not all of us are going through a 12-hour thing or a 17-hour thing. Some of you might be going through a year-long thing. Some of you have gone through divorces who last for years, custody battles. Okay, you got to look at it through the lens of your purpose. What does God want out of you? What is he pruning out of you? What impurities are being refined out of you right now so you can step into who you are meant to be. So we're going to wrap it up with those 10 right now. Tell me over on social media what stood out to you the most. Teach me. I would love to know your lessons of what you've learned in your life, just little nuggets like this. And a reminder, if you're feeling like you want some more help with going into a new paradigm in your life, creating a new level of you, make sure to head over to kaylacraft.com, fill out an application for mentorship. And we, we just want to be a part of your growth as an entrepreneur. So we'll see you over there. Bye.